some of their names you know, uh, Justice Katanje Brown Jackson, Vice President Kamala Harris, uh, some other names you may not know, the first black woman federal judge was Constance Baker Motley. Constance Baker Motley, can you please say her name? Uh, the first black woman law professor was Ludi Littell. Ludi Littell, can you please say her name? The first black woman dean of a law school was Patricia Roberts at Howard Law School, 1969. Patricia Roberts, can you please say her name? Patricia One more name to say that you already know. <laughs> the first black woman dean at the University of Washington Law School is Tamira Lawson. Please say her name. Congratulations, congratulations Dean Lawson. Congratulations to Dean Lawson's mother who is here. Uh, congratulations to all of the ancestors who made this moment possible. Alice Walker reminds us of the congratulations that they deserve in a poem she wrote called Women. They were women then, my mother's generation, husky of voice, stout of step, with fist as well as hands. How they battered down doors and ironed starch white shirts, how they led armies, head rag generals across minefields, booby trap ditches to discover books, a place for us, how they knew what we must know without knowing a page of it themselves. Especially remembering those women, happy Black History Month. During these 28 days of remembrance and reflection, uh, I, I came a long way to, to ask just one question that only Dean Lawson can answer. Uh, what does it mean for a black woman to lead this great law school when much of black history can be understood as a story about resisting law? Not resisting law in theory, but resistance to the way that law has too often functioned in the United States. Resistance to the things that law has done to people, especially people of color and poor people and LGBTQ people. Many of the, the folks that we celebrate during Black History Month are, are outlaws, Rosa Parks. Martin Luther King, Angela Davis, John Lewis, part of their struggle for freedom required them to break the law in order to reshape the law. And now here you are, Dean Lawson, running the law school. <laughs> As RuPaul would say, you better work. <laughs> and and, and I, I think the ancestors would, would add, yeah, you better because you have lots of work. Much work remains to be done. You can start here in Kings County, King County, where white households enjoy one of the highest net worths in the country. $456,000 doesn't extend to everybody. The average net worth of a black household in King County is $23,000, just 5% of the white average. 46% of the black people in this county live in poverty, compared with 16% of white people. So, Dean, you have a lot of justice work to do. And, and right here at home, and, and you've got some of the best allies to help you, this first class faculty and staff, uh, the UW students, the law students who you're already bragging to me about. <laughs> and, and I know through UW's work that you are already working 
on, on these problems. Problems like in King County, indigenous people are three times more likely to be killed by the police than white people. The problem that in King County, Latinx and black people and indigenous people get more time for the same crime. Now, I know that UW is already focused on these issues in, in task force. I know that you have partners all over the state, all over the city, including my friend Dan Saddleberg, who's here, the former uh, Kings County prosecuting attorney. <laughs> well, thank you, Dan, for your fine work on, on these issues. And, and of course, these are, are more than local issues. And our nation needs your help. Our nation needs your help because UW educates people who will not only be leaders in the city and the state, but people who are leaders in the country and around the world. So we need your intellect, we need your creativity, we need your ambition. We need you because of, of last month in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, last month in, in Memphis, Tennessee, the police stopped uh, a young black man named Tyree Nichols for reasons that are still unknown. Uh, the police report said that it was for reckless driving, but the police chief said she didn't see any evidence of that. The most infuriating thing about the videos that we've all seen is, is what they tell us about the, the rule of, of law. Uh, in those videos, the police officers looked like they were doing their jobs. That's how they thought they could get away with it. Uh, I once heard Dean Lawson give a talk about a piece she was working on, some of her excellent criminal justice scholarship, where she said that if you get shot by the police and you don't die, the most common thing that happens to you is you get locked up. That whatever attracted the attention of the police to you in the first place, whatever made them shoot you, uh, is a criminal case. And that's the most typical result. You go to jail. That, that's how the law works. And in the video from Memphis, the videos, it looks rope. Uh, Mr. Nichols doesn't appear to fight or to otherwise threaten the officers. He's as polite as a person can be when he's being tortured to death. He says, please stop. Maybe, maybe that's why in the videos you sometimes hear the officers calling him bro. It's their way of communicating that it's, it's nothing personal. The videos depict the police not so much angry as, as hard as hard at work, putting in time. As they beat Mr. Nichols, they stop occasionally to catch their breath. And one officer pauses to tie his shoe. Uh, and near the end of the videos, uh, as a bloody and bruised Nichols is propped up against a squad car, uh, the police do uh, what a work team does when it successfully completes a project. Fist bumps and congratulations all around. Dean Lawson was a prosecutor and then a scholar of the criminal legal system. And so this feels like a, a full circle moment. I'm excited to see all that is to come on these issues. There's a, a wonderful documentary about the first time that Cory Booker ran for office. Of course, he's now the US Senator from New Jersey, but when this documentary was made, he wasn't too long out of law school, and he was trying to be the mayor of Newark. He was running against someone who had been in office for a long time, someone who seemed kind of stuck, and Booker was the underdog. He actually ended up losing this first race, but you didn't know that at the time. There was a lot of excitement about his candidacy. 
especially among the city's young people. And the documentary shows this campaign rally where Booker works the crowd into a frenzy. And then when it's over, the camera focuses on this little black girl, she's about nine years old, with the brightest eyes. And the filmmaker asks her, did you see Cory Booker? And she smiles the biggest smile, and she says, yes. And then she smiles some more and says, and I smelled him, too. <laughs> yeah, the filmmaker laughs, and she asks, well, what did he smell like? The little girl pauses. She thinks carefully. And then she smiles this gorgeous, confident smile, and she says, he smelled like the future. Oh. <laughs> Friends, I came a long way to proclaim to this beloved community that today smells like the future. In this, this place between East and West, between many old worlds and many new worlds, in, in this place where the law has created wealth and the law has taken away wealth, in this place where the law has eroded racial justice and the law has advanced racial justice, you have a dean who stands with you to wield the law on behalf of all of us who felt shut out, forgotten, alone, or abandoned. I remember those beautiful words from the choir that we heard a few minutes ago. Sing a song full of the, the hope that the present has brought us. And during Black History Month, I also remember those other words, sing a song uh, full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. And I, I remember that dark past. And, and I, I wonder like who I would have been, what I would have done. I, I, I hope that if I were an enslaved person, I would have been a runaway. I hope that I would have been one of those enslaved people who, who led uprisings. The reality is that's not what most people did. Uh, during the civil rights movement, I, I hope that, that like my mother, I would have marched with Martin and taken it to the streets with Malcolm. Reality is that's not what most people did. And, and the movement for black lives, you know, the expression is, if you want to know what you would have done back in the day, ask yourself, what are you doing right now? What Dean Lawson is doing is leading this fine law school to the next level. Dean, may the ancestors be with you. May your mother and all of the sheroes of black history continue to light your path. Uh, may you continue to make us proud. Congratulations, Dean Lawson. Congratulations, UW. <laughs>